the CEO of Precision Hawk. Previously, Michael was the co-founder and CEO of Blackboard, an education technology company that he started in 1997. It grew to over 3,000 employees and went public in 2004, sold for 1.7 billion in 2011. After Blackboard, Michael founded Social Radar, a company focused on using satellite and street level pictures to geolocate business storefronts, which was eventually sold to Verizon MapQuest. So please give a big welcome to Michael Chasen. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Michael Chasen. I'm the CEO of Precision Hawk, one of the leaders in the commercial drone space. Now, I am a little new to this industry. Uh, I joined Precision Hawk only in January of this past year, but I'm not new to working in emerging markets, and I'm not new to working in companies that can fundamentally make a difference as markets evolve. Uh, as you just heard, prior to Precision Hawk, I was the co-founder and CEO of a large globally learning software company, Blackboard. Uh, if you go back to college now, or if you have kids in K through 12, you might register or sign up for your classes online, hand in your homework online, take tests and quizzes online. Uh, I helped invent the software that enables institutions to do that at tens of thousands of schools around the world. I worked for 17 years at Blackboard before eventually selling the company. So, so people often ask me though, they said, why did you move from the education space into the drone space? And I explained that I've always been a person who has a passion for making a difference. That's why I started Blackboard. Uh, over a decade ago, I recognized that the internet was gonna fundamentally change the way people were engaging in teaching and learning. And I wanted to be a part of that. Similarly, today, I think that drones are gonna change the world. And I wanna be a part of that as well. And even though I'm someone who's passionate about disruption, I, I've never been one who's been satisfied with where things stand today. I think I get this from my parents. Uh, I, I remember when I uh, called my mom up when we were selling Blackboard. I said, Mom, I said, can you believe it? Uh, the company that me and my roommate from college started with, just the two of us, in a brownstone in downtown Washington, D.C., we grew to over 3,000 employees in 20 offices around the world. Uh, a company that started with just a handful of schools using our technology grew to have over 30,000 institutions and being used by tens of millions of students on a daily basis. A company that we started with just a few hundred dollars in revenue grew to eventually become a public company that I just sold for $1.7 billion. And my mom said, son, that's great. But remember, you're not a doctor. <laughs> Jewish mother from a certain segment of the audience will understand that. So look, uh, I think I, that's where I get my drive of never being satisfied with where things are today. And, and when I look at the drone industry, I, I feel the same way. Uh, there's still so much to be done. But when I was looking at joining Precision Hawk, I, I had to ask myself a fundamental question about what I thought that this opportunity really could mean in the long run. And to be honest, it's a question that I continue to ask myself almost every day. I, I mean, I get that the consumer drone industry is a multi-billion dollar market. And, and I get that the, the military drone industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. But is the commercial drone industry really going to take off? Is this a technology that's gonna fundamentally change the way companies do business? Or to put it another way, are drones the next iPhone or the next Roomba? And let me explain this in a little bit more detail. What I mean by this is, are drones a technology that are gonna infiltrate and innovate every single industry? and fundamentally cause businesses to recraft how they're engaging with the clients and how they're doing business? Is it gonna change the fundamentals of business the, the way that the iPhone did? Or are drones primarily an appliance? Uh, maybe good for one or two things, but they'll fall under the umbrella of really a single use technology. Now, I think that there are a lot of similarities between uh, the drone industry and the, and the smartphone industry. So, uh, for example, I mean, both started really uh, maybe just having a shelf or two in the back of electronics stores, uh, like uh, Radio Shack or Best Buy, or they were considered maybe a, a toy. But both have evolved to not only having entire sections of stores dedicated to showcasing this technology, but there are entire stores just dedicated to smartphones, and now there are stores coming out just dedicated to drone technology. 
both smartphone technology and drone technology started as either just primarily being used by uh, the tech geeks or uh, often by children. And today we're starting to see the same way that business people and businesses started to adopt smartphone technology, we are now seeing corporations adopt drone technology as well. But the real value of the smartphone came when people started envisioning different applications for different industries and extending the phone with additional hardware. Uh, people were making it the, the center point to control their music or even their entire home. Or by developing applications, both for the consumer as well as for the different businesses that want to utilize this technology. And I believe that that's what we're starting to see with drone technology across various industries. For example, in agriculture, uh, an industry that Precision Hawk knows well, uh, farmers are taking drones and they're flying it over their farmland to get exact precise counts of their plants. Uh, they're using it to identify where there is uh, ladybug infestations or, or water damage. They're figuring out where they might need to replant. They're using it to maximize their yield and reduce their expenses. Uh, we're, we're dealing with large agricultural clients. Uh, the, the companies that uh, mix seeds and, and change genetics to try to maximize the value of the, the plants or the seeds that they sell. And they're using our drones to fly over their fields and map the plants on a daily or weekly basis and then use machine learning over time to see how those plants are growing and how they can improve the life and the yield of that material. In construction, you have uh, companies like McCarthy that are integrating drones to automatically generate very accurate 3D models. And the models can be used for pre-construction or they can hand it off to uh, the project as the, as the project moves forward. Uh, in fact, though, we're, we're starting to see uh, a lot of our clients go beyond just using the visual cameras and they're using a LiDAR to get exact millimeter level measurements of the components that they're building on site or we're working with electrical firms that build large electronical components off-site and then need to bring them together. They have to exactly match when they're putting them into their, their data center or building. And they want to use drones to fly around those to get the exact measurements of every component to make sure that when the work is done, they perfectly integrate and fit together. Just the other week, uh, we were, my team was over in Alaska and we were flying uh, one of the gas pipelines there. Um, this is a, a project that previously could only be done with a helicopter and a lot of man hours and a lot of expense. We were using drone technology to identify where there might be structural weaknesses in the pipeline because as the ice was melting, some of the, some of the uh, parts holding the pipeline were starting to slightly tweak and adjust and they wanted to make sure there was no damage to that pipeline. Uh, we used a beyond visual line of sight and some custom rhythm written applications to be able to make sure that we were fully monitoring and providing a whole set of data back to our client in the energy field. In insurance, improving claim assessment process by improving the speed of the reimbursements of the client, drones are being used for that. But even more so, we're now talking with insurance companies about being able to see and measure a, a leak in someone's roof before there's additional water damage. And this can save the insurance company millions of dollars every single year by being proactive, identifying problems before they become big issues for the client. And this is uh, just what we all saw last week in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. Uh, our teams were on the ground working with different government agencies performing aerial inspection of levees to assess breaks and providing flood maps to chart the water damage in neighborhoods around Houston. And there were many other companies here as well that donated their drone technology or their services to help the people of Texas uh, in a time that they really needed every helping hand they could get. And drone technology played a part of that. We've already started talking with people and other companies here about deploying additional assets to Florida in the wake of the hurricane that may come back. And again, years ago, people would have never imagined that the drones could be useful in these type of uh, horrific situations. And yet here you have a community coming together, figuring out exactly how to apply this technology to be helpful. Now, so all these industries have already felt the impact of drone technology. But also, drones are starting to impact uh, industries that you might not have even thought of. Um, there are warehouses being built today that are using drones to track all logistical activity, uh, automating inventory, automatically uh, moving items around, improving the level of tracking capability, all without human intervention. We are all counting on Amazon to deliver us everything from diapers to day quill right to your doorstep. Uh, replacing uh, uh, the inefficiencies of the manual labor process of delivering things uh, that you're ordering online. 
Uh, you're seeing drones getting involved in sporting events, uh, not just following Olympic athletes down the slopes uh, and now giving you new angles to experience the game, but drones themselves have become a sport with drone racing and other drone sport type activities. Or even here in Vegas, I, I don't know if a year ago I would have imagined that bottle service would be being delivered by drone, but if you go to Marquee Day Club, uh, they have built a program where if you spend enough money to make sure that you're getting your alcohol right away, they will use a drone to, I, I think maybe illegally, fly over the people and deliver your bottle of alcohol right to uh, your cabana area. So again, I, I think these are all great examples of how drones are starting to, to infiltrate and innovate across industries and maybe we would have guessed it would have been in agriculture or construction, but I don't know if I would have guessed that drones would have infiltrated the Vegas bar scene. But yet today, if you walk into a Fortune 500 company and ask what they're doing about mobile, they'll point out that everyone in their company has a smartphone. Uh, they have a mobile division of the company. They have a, a team writing mobile apps. The main way they interface with their clients is through uh, smartphones. And in fact, their product has a whole smartphone component. The core focus of everything many companies do today relies on mobile. Yet if you go into those same companies, the ones that are already even utilizing drone technology today, they couldn't point you to their drone division or their drone development team or the, the way that they're developing new drone apps uh, or the many ways in which drones may be interfacing with their customers. So the question that I ask this audience and, and, and myself is, okay, well, are we right on the cusp? Is it that we all see what's about to happen and, and maybe everyone else isn't yet aware of this huge tidal wave of innovation that's gonna start wiping across every single industry? Uh, or is it that the technology today is still underdeveloped? Are there too many regulatory hurdles? Is that what's holding us back? Um, do companies not understand how to deploy this technology? Do companies not understand just the type of innovation they can unleash at this company utilizing this state-of-the-art technology? Are we being held back because of these things? Or are we being held back because the product is as advanced as it's going to be? And uh, at the end of the day, what we've developed is a really good Roomba. Well, the bet that we're making at Precision Hawk is that the drone is the next iPhone and that every industry it touches, it's going to revolutionize. Now, how are we preparing for that? In three ways. First, much like the iPhone had a bunch of add-on applications and add-on hardware technology, we are focused on making sure that drones have all of the hardware components they need, all the additional sensors. We're adding beyond just the visual and the video sensors, we're doing hyperspectral sensors or a LiDAR, we're starting to look at ground penetrating radar to make sure that this is all the input devices anyone might need across the different industries to make sure they're able to run and collect all of the data they need to make informed business decisions. Beyond making sure we have the right hardware components integrated with the drone, we're looking at building specific applications and algorithms that lets the drones collect and analyze the data, making it useful for the companies that want to deploy this technology. And second, we understand that this is a complex new technology. So we've been focusing on bringing on board experts out of the different industries that we're making sure we want drone technology to work with, such as agriculture, insurance, energy, construction, government, and bringing on board these experts to help us design the right algorithms and help work with the companies to make sure they know how to deploy this otherwise complex technology. And not only are we doing it ourselves, we're partnering with great companies, such as training companies like Dark Drones, who we're working with to bring into our clients who might need Part 107 certification, and other companies that can help uh, make sure that our clients or other people in the industry know how to best deploy this technology. I mean, look, when, when mobile started, companies didn't necessarily know they might need a mobile division, they should be building mobile apps, so a lot of the the, the, the mature services organization can work with them to help them put together mobile strategies, and I believe that this is one of the things that needs to happen in the drone industry. And third, we're making sure that we are giving back to the community and doing so in an open way. Uh, we announced at AUBSI that, that our software that helps you collect and analyze data, Precision Mapper, is going to be free for hobbyists, enthusiasts, uh, service individuals, people that need an, a, a, a product to, to analyze the data that they're collecting and make, use it to make informed business decisions. 
So I encourage people, if you haven't tried it, go to Precision Mapper. We're covering the costs and all the processing time you need because we want to see this industry use and develop more business applications utilizing drone technology. And third, we're making sure that we help foster a community. We wrote our application on a set of open APIs. And so what that means is that anybody can write additional algorithms to process all of this data that the drones are collecting. We have an algorithm marketplace, uh, if you will. And by the end of the year, I expect we'll have almost 100 different algorithms able to help everybody from the, 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 the farmers who are surveying their land to insurance adjusters who want to do roof reports to uh, the, 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 the site managers who want to make sure that their construction project is matching their plans. And all the ideas that we're not even thinking of, you can use our platform, write algorithms, even charge for them if you would like, the same way that App Store works. But what we're trying to do is get all this intellectual property together to work to help elevate the entire industry. So yes, I do think that drones are the next iPhone. And I can tell you that we're directing the 150 people that we have at our company and the hundreds of clients that we touch every day to help move the industry in this direction. And so when I ask myself this on a daily basis, I say, yes, I do think that we are at the cost. And it's not to say that we don't have to address the technology and the regulatory hurdles and helping clients themselves set up their organizations to take advantage of this technology. But I do, at the end of the day, believe we are on the cusp. We are on the cusp of seeing drone technology affect every single industry it touches. And uh, just in case I'm wrong, uh, we're, we're working on this. <laughs> I was very excited to be able to uh, share some of our thoughts and views, and I'm looking forward to continuing the conversation with many of you throughout the conference. If I don't get to see you at our booth, please, I invite all of you to come join us uh, at Hyde tonight in the Bellagio. Uh, Precision Walk is hosting an after-hours party that starts at 10.30. Please stop by our booth and pick up a, a free invitation. I'd love to see you there and continue the conversation. Everyone enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.